Yo, yo, yo. What's good with it, y'all? It's your boy Lamborghini Prime back once again talking this boxing shit. And as always, make sure you check out my all new album. It's my turn, the Throne Ascension LP. It's a motherfucking classic all the way around. You can find it right now on my official site, hustlegameboss.com. It's also available on Apple Music, iTunes, Spotify, Pandora, Google Play, Tidal. Big shout out to Tidal. It's even on YouTube. Should you can find it anywhere. Just type in my name, The Supreme General, or the album title, and it shall appear. And that's in any outlet you so choose. Whichever one you prefer to use, that's the one. You search my name, and you're going to find me, baby. I appreciate it. Also... If you fuck me the long way, make sure you stop by my official site, hustlegameboss.com forward slash shop and cop you some uh, official Supreme General merchandise. Uh, I greatly appreciate everybody who fuck with me. You know, that's a real big deal to me. So if you cop something and you want me to show you some love personally, just take a picture of it. Tag me in that shit on Instagram at hustlegameboss or Twitter at hustlegameboss. Also on Facebook, the Supreme General. Tag me in the shit. If I see it, I will definitely repost it and show you some love because I appreciate those who appreciate me. You know what I mean? With that said, let's move on to this video. It's very important in my opinion. Uh, <clears throat> discuss what we about to discuss right now. And that's um, Saul Canelo Alvarez being officially suspended, temporarily suspended, by the Nevada State Athletic Commission because of his uh, recent two failed, I want to make that clear, he failed two tests with the um, clombuterol in the system. And uh, they had to do something, you know, something had to be done. Triple G and uh, his team really seem to be upset. You know, they, they're visibly perturbed by this shit. When people ask them questions, you know, they stop giving a fuck about hiding the fact that they were bothered by, you know, the way not only it seemed that they was bothered by the fact that my man got caught juicing, it seemed it was more bothered by the fact that, you know, it was almost like, uh, Canelo was giving Carte Blanche to go on the juice because basically everybody preemptively said they wasn't going to do shit about it and that they just believed this story. <laughs> Which, in my opinion, anytime any athlete that's being paid millions of dollars, shit, even thousands of dollars, it ain't even got to be millions, just thousands, anytime it's money on the table, in the month, and 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 they uh they get caught with any kind of steroid or any kind of performance enhancing drug in their system, be it natural or synthetic. I believe that they knew it was there, it was put there, and it was put there to give them an advantage. I mean, this is their job, this is what they do, this is how they eat. So would it shock me if a professional athlete gets caught juicing? No, absolutely not. It does not shock me. Does it uh ruin Canelo's legacy in my opinion? Yes. It 100% does because I already felt like um Canelo record, I don't want to say he had a padded record cuz that, that's the wrong that's the wrong way for me to put it cuz that's not even what I mean. But I will say that uh, there's a little fluff in his record, you know. I mean, it's a little fluff in just about anybody's record. You can look at anybody's record. It's always, you, you can find some fluff in that motherfucker. But with Canelo's, it was a lot. Uh, him and Lomachenko specifically, they got records where um, they've won fights legitimately. And then they've won other fights by, uh, I'll just say, skullduggery. You know, of some sort that came into play to somehow tilt the scales of of justice in their favor. You know what I mean? In Canelo case, he got a few decisions that um, were uh, eyebrow raising, to say the least. Um, Even in the fight that he lost with Mayweather, he got a weird decision. You know, he somehow got a draw, even though he got his ass whooped for literally 12 out of 12 rounds. I didn't give Canelo one round in that fight. It was a masterful performance by Floyd, in my opinion. 
and Canelo was game, and he deserves a lot of credit for surviving and doing the shit that he was able to do, given his uh, level experience at the time, but, um, yeah, a draw was get the fuck out of here. Then the Triple G shit is another get the fuck out of here. Triple G won that shit 9-3 on my card. Then um, you look at the Austin Trout shit, another get the fuck out of here. But that was that was a close one. So, you know, I give motherfuckers the benefit of the doubt in there. But uh, Trout, Trout had a very good showing in that fight, man. I really think he did well. I think um he deserves some more credit for that fight. Even though he got dropped, everybody, all the highlights, you see that fight. You see that one, him getting dropped early in the fight, but they don't show the rest of that fight, you know, <laughs> where he recovered from that shit and did pretty well for himself. But um, I say the most egregious outside of the Triple G and the Floyd Mayweather, because Mayweather was definitely the most egregious, but um, the most egregious Canelo gift decision was the Lara. Lara easily beat Canelo A4, in my opinion. One guy was landing, the other guy wasn't. Um, just having aggressiveness. Now, I respect aggressiveness heavy, especially body shots, too. I give credit for body shots where most people tend to overlook that shit, but no. First of all, Canelo's body work was not better than the work that Lara was landing all motherfucking night. So, I just, I thought that was a rather, rather easy fight. <laughs> that Lyra won and he was not given the decision so you know it is what it is and then when it comes to Lomachenko the Nicholas Walter shit was suspect and weird same thing with the Rigondeaux shit I give him full credit for the Rigondeaux don't get me wrong I give him full credit because I said before the fight I would give him full credit and this Rigo fought that he did what he did you know put himself in that position I don't, I don't, I can't explain that situation. I don't know what the fuck was going on, but I know it wasn't just skills that defeated him or Nicholas Walters. It seems like both of those guys like had some kind of outside influence or something. But I don't want to make no excuses. I actually respect Lomachenko's weirdo situations a lot more than I respect Canelo's because at least in Lomachenko's situation, he was dominating these motherfuckers in the real fight. You know, Canelo shit. Canelo's getting his ass whooped. I, that Triple G fought, fight, Canelo got his ass whooped. I don't give a fuck what nobody say. Ass whooping. Man got three rounds out of that shit, and I was being generous with that. Well, not generous, nah. I give him, he, he earned three rounds out of that bitch. But three out of 12 ain't shit to me. So, and that's definitely a L. So, it is what it is. But the focus of this is the steroid shit, man. Here's the bottom line. Like I said before, if you're a professional athlete, you're making millions of dollars, and you get caught with any type of PED in your system, you knew it was there and it's there for a reason, in my opinion, whether it's a masking agent. In the case of clombuterol, there's a few different things it could be used for. It could be used to mask other steroids. It can be used as a steroid itself because uh, the thing, the benefits that clombuterol provides are exactly the things that canelo needs increased stamina increased wind you know what i mean increased power shit like that you know it's it just is what it is but like i said before in my other video i believe canelo been juicing for a long time so i honestly don't think that the him being caught is going to have much of an effect on this fight now do I want to hear like because you know inevitably they're gonna start talking about some oh well he passed every test outside of the ones that he failed leading up to the fight and it's like motherfucker that don't mean nothing to me it means absolutely nothing to me <laughs> all that means is that he either a developed a better doping regimen to get around the motherfucking test or b He's already reaped the benefits of doping for however long he was doping before he got caught. You know what I'm saying? And now he's clean. Because from what I understand, man, I'm not a steroid expert. I don't know a lot about the shit, you know. And I don't really care to learn too much about the shit. I'm not really interested in steroids and shit like that. But what I will say is this, man. From what I understand, them shit's going cycles. You know what I mean? Cycles where you, you know, you juiced up. 
and then you're going to piss hot and then cycles where you still maintain the benefits from the juice that you use maybe six to eight months or however long it was ago before training camp started and now that training camp starts you won't pop positive because you're still using all the benefits that you gained from however long ago before training camp started and the testing started so him passing subsequent tests means nothing to me you know what i'm saying because i just that shit just don't mean nothing to me you know and now if this was football no well, football is kind of dangerous too but it's not boxing you know what i mean you're not literally physically trying to inflict damage upon this guy's head like in boxing you punching another guy in the head to not literally to knock them out in football you're trying to get a ball across the line by any means necessary so most all of the sports even football i give motherfuckers a pass with that steroid shit i don't even trip you know what i'm saying you know Basketball is another one that's kind of iffy, you know, but still, if you get caught juicing in basketball, what are you really doing? You're trying to put a ball in the hole, and the way basketball is played nowadays, man, it's just so goddamn soft. I don't really give a shit about the Royals. Same thing with all, basically any other sport other than boxing. Boxing is the only sport I feel like you should not be able to juice, simply because, number one... Juicing, though it does help, I'm sure it gives uh, certain fighters a psychological advantage over others, knowing that they got that edge. But it's something that um, it's not as beneficial as you may, would think, because at the end of the day, you still need skills. And even if you are juiced up and you got all that shit that Roy's give you, or being juiced out on Roy's will give you all those benefits, it's still, you know, what I mean, it's not, it's not. If if you're up against a skilled fighter who can counter punch and know what the fuck you doing, you know what I mean? It's it can be a long day for you regardless, you know? And that's the beauty of the sweet science, you know what I'm saying? You can be taken apart even with all that extra physical extra shit, you know what I mean? But uh as far as this fight goes, I believe that if we gonna be fair about it, the shit should be canceled. It should be canceled. But to be real about it, even if it do get canceled, what are they gonna do? Set it like six months later, or eight months later, or whenever Canelo gets reinstated, which won't be long because this is a big money fight. So even if you push it down the line six more months, what did that really do? It just really give Canelo a chance to juice longer. <laughs> you know what I mean? It's not. That doesn't help in my opinion. That's why I was on the fence at first whether they should cancel this fight and uh, let Triple G move on. You know, rule it as a no contest or give uh, Triple G a W for this fuck shit. But I don't know, man. I don't know. It, it just seemed like you're kicking a can down the road. And what difference is it going to make? If you're just going to let the, the fight happen six months later, what difference did it, did it make at the end of the day? You might as well have it on in May, you know. When both guys, you know, Triple G's not as old and Canelo hasn't had an additional six months to be able to juice, you know. So, I think the fight should go on if Triple G and his team agree to it. That's the only way, you know. I mean, if they don't agree, I don't feel like it should go on because I believe from watching these subsequent interviews with Triple G after he found out, man, I feel like Triple G, he he feels some type of way about this shit. You know what I mean? He really do. He really tight about it. Like, and I, I mean, how can you blame him? His opponent has been given a fucking free pass to go ahead and do whatever he want to do, take whatever kind of anabolic steroid or whatever kind of steroid he want. You know, he's been given a pass to basically do that and get away with it. You know, and and that's gotta be disturbing when you're going into a boxing match against this guy. You know, even if you already, if you feel like how Triple G and his team, they feel like he's been juicing the whole time. And given the results of the last fight, the juice didn't really help Canelo too much, man, because my man Triple G ate his motherfucking punches like Skittles and kept going. That shit wasn't nothing, man. So, I don't know, man. Middle Middleweight might be, it, it might be, the water might be too deep there for a guy like Canelo, because... 
even if Canelo somehow beat Triple G, which I just don't see happening, even if he somehow beats a Triple G, can he beat Charlo? No. I don't even know if he could beat Billy Joe Saunders. And I damn sure know he can't beat Danny Jacobs. So, I mean, this is this is a, this is a rough ride up ahead for uh, Canelo. You know, but, you know, go go to the boy, going to pull something out the ass, get him a couple cupcake fights before he had to go on the fire and fight somebody real again if he beat Triple G. But, like I said, I don't expect him to win this fight. I think that they thought that they caught Triple G on the downturn of his career, but they didn't. They caught Triple G at that point where, you know, <laughs> he's still too good to beat Canelo. And I believe that's going to happen again on May 5th or Cinco de Mayo this year, you know. I'm looking forward to it. But I will say this. if It's all bad for Canelo, you know. And it's really, this doesn't hurt Triple G at all. If Triple G lose the fight, get knocked out, stretched. I mean, all the way stretched. If that happens. Nobody's going to give Canelo full credit for that shit. Nobody. I know I'm not. You know what I mean? You don't get caught juice and then stretch your opponent and get full credit from me. No. No. No, not at all. You know, if Canelo wins a decision that he actually deserves, which I doubt it will happen, but if he does, it will still be marred by controversy surrounding the um, Clubuterol, you know. So... This is a lose-lose for Canelo, in my opinion, and he has to win this fight. Because if he loses it after getting caught juicing and get knocked out like I expect him to get knocked out, it's going to be hard for him to recover, man. He's going to have to, it's going to be hard to recover. And he's going to have to fight Triple G again. So, you know, I mean, I don't know, man. I, I don't, I don't necessarily... I don't want this precedent to be set that you can violate with the juice, have a bullshit excuse, or at least an excuse that's somewhat viable, use that excuse and still get praise. I don't, I don't want to set that precedent, but at the same time, I don't think this fight should be stopped either, you know, um, accepting, like I said, if Triple G, like, yo, if he don't want this shit to go down, he feels some type of way about it and he want to move on, I'm 100% cool with that. But outside of that being the case, man, fuck it, let it go down. You know what I mean? That's my opinion on it. So that being said, I'm out this motherfucker. I'm on to the next one. Holler at me. 100.